Hello. Today's session will cover setting up payment selection codes, creating system generated payment batches, and controlling payments in accounts payable. Let's begin with payment selection codes. Payment selection codes are used to establish the parameters for selecting unpaid invoices and initiating payment transactions to settle them. Access the Payment Selection Codes feature through the AP Setup folder. You will need to create at least one payment selection code before Accounts Payable can automatically generate payments using the Create Payment Batch window. Each payment selection code consists of three tabs of information utilized to specify the criteria for selecting outstanding invoices. The tabs are Select, Criteria, and Exclusion. There is also an optional Fields tab. To start, payment selection codes consist of up to six alphanumeric characters and the description field can be up to 60 characters long. Now let's look at the details of the Select tab. Specify the bank. Choose the bank from which checks will be drawn from. The Select vendors with this bank code only will restrict vendor selection to only those who are tagged with the same bank code as on the payment selection code. The apply method defines how partial payments should be applied to invoices with different contracts, projects, and categories. Options include top down, which will automatically apply payments to invoice details starting with the first detail until fully applied, and then prorate by amount pro proportionally applies payments to all invoice details. The criteria tab has the following selection elements. Document selection. Specify how to select documents for payment by A, due date. Choose to select documents due on or before the specif specified end date of the payment batch. The discount date will select documents eligible for a discount if paid on or before the specified date. Due date or discount date option covers both of the two options above. Payment document selection. Specify whether to pay all selected documents with the all selected documents option or only transactions with a forced status. The control payment screen is used to manage invoice status and will be covered later in this video. We have a vendor selection range. Control selection based on vendor group, vendor number, account set, vendor amount, and payment code. Optionally, select a range based on an optional field. The exclusion tab lets you enter specific vendors you do not wish to have selected as part of this set of selection criteria. Now let's turn our attention to creating system generated payment batches. To automate payment entries for your due accounts, you can utilize the create payment batch function in AP transactions. It's crucial to note that each bank account requiring payment issuance necessitates a separate payment batch. Furthermore, it is highly recommended that you create separate payment batches for each payment type you need to process. In other words, checks and electronic transfers should be in separate batches. It is also important to note that you can only have one system generated batch open and in progress at any one time in Sage. Prior to initiating a payment batch, it is essential to 
1. Post all your outstanding batches. Post invoice batches to reflect any new changes, credit notes, and debit notes on vendor accounts. Ensure correctness of vendor records by posting adjustment batches. Post your payment batches. As accounts payable scans open batches for pending payments, although complications may arise when working on multiple payment batches concurrently. You may choose to enable the generate separate payments for each invoice option in vendor records for those requiring individual invoice payments. This means some, for some vendors, you may need to create multiple checks with one invoice each on them, as opposed to one check with multiple invoices being paid on it. Utilize the control payment screen, which we will cover off in a little bit here in this video, to set payment maximums or hold payments on specific invoices. Consider placing vendor records on hold to prevent payments. Modify payment selection criteria on the Create Payment Batch screen to exclude particular vendors from the check issuance or from the payment issuance. The Create Payment Batch screen selects vendors for payments based on the predefined selection criteria, subsequently generating a payment batch editable in the Payment Entry screen. Payment criteria are established by defining at least one payment selection code using the Payment Selection Code screen. Upon batch creation, select the desired code and adjust criteria as needed, mirroring those defined in the payment selection codes. So we see here we've pulled up the all VEN that we previously saw in the setup screen, and it has pulled those details over. One thing that needs to be set up on this particular screen that's not set up on the criteria is your due on or before date. This date depending upon the option set here, is going to identify those transactions which are due on or before either the due date, the discount date, or the combination thereof in your payment run. If needed, you can alter the selection ranges or the exclusion list on the create payment batch screen on an ad hoc as needed basis. Once you have defined your criteria, run the payment register. Execute the pre-check register to review check details and totals based upon the specified criteria. Subsequently, adjustments can be made, such as withholding payment on certain transactions or forcing payments on others. If payment restrictions are applied using the control payment screens, reprint the pre-check register to verify their impact. This register may also encompass bypass payables, including those on hold in the control payment screen, vendors withheld from payment in the vendor screen, and transactions forced due to amounts outside specific specified check amount ranges. When ready, click on the Generate button to create your payment batch. This will create the payment entry batch as you had done, as if you had done them all by hand. Now, if needed, you can make additional changes and edits if the option to allow edit of system generated batches is enabled in your setup. At this point, you can follow the standard process to edit, print checks if necessary, and post your batch. The AP Control Payment screen empowers you to manage payments for specific vendors, documents, and multiple payment schedules. 
It offers the flexibility to adjust payment statuses and clear invoice payment limits for individual transactions or groups of transactions across vendors. Here's a breakdown of key functions within the control payment screen. First, we have selected a vendor, a document number, and a payment number. Payment numbers are only applicable where you have terms codes set up with multiple payments on them. Hold status. Placing a transaction on hold suspends its payment until the hold is lifted. Notably, putting invoices on hold via the control payment screen restricts payment generation through the create payment batch screen, but does not hinder check entry via the payment entry screen. Forcing payments ensures that a payment will be generated in the subsequent payment batch, providing the vendor and check amount fall within your specified ranges. This feature offers control over individual transactions and it's recommended over manipulating due or discount dates to achieve similar effects. Also on the single document tab, we can set a payment limit Setting a payment limit will cap of the amount paid for that particular invoice on the next system generated batch. Due date and discount changes. Any modifications to due dates, discount dates, discount percentages or amounts are considered permanent adjustments to the document. These changes are typically made following term renegotiation or if the original document contained errors. Please note that you cannot change the overall financial elements of a document in the control payment screens. We can control how much is going to be paid at the next given interval with the payment limit, but we're not changing the overall amount of the liability or the expense accounts utilized on the transaction. If you need to do financial related adjustments, you will either need to do a credit note or debit note or an adjustment entry in accounts payable. Sometimes you need to impact more than one transaction at a time. In that case, you can use the range of documents. You can select all the documents from a particular vendor group or a vendor number or a document number range. You can then further refine it by selecting certain document types and then set the status as appropriate selected criteria. When you're ready, press the process button. This concludes this training video. Thank you very much for watching until the end. Have a great day.